All right, Gerald W. Bristol, let's continue with our, our cutting pipe, prepping, that kind of a thing. Once we get this set where we want it to be, I'm going to cut about an inch off right here. You can look and see on Mr. Matthews' bevel machine and most all of them, there's going to be little notches and it tells you what the degree is you're cutting. Now, most downhill pipe, pipelining is a 30 degree bevel. If you're in a plant and you're doing low hydrogen, or you're in a school and you're testing to like B313 or whatever, it's 37 and a half degrees, okay? So the bevels get wider. It's a lot easier to weld that low hydrogen when you have a wider bevel and it's a little harder, especially if you're on that six inch schedule 40. It makes an ugly weld in there. It's very hard to learn how to weld on six inch schedule 40 because the bevels are so tight. The rod puts all out of metal. It's all humped up in the middle. Then when you go to cap it, it's too high and ugly. Try a 37 and a half degree like you're supposed to on a job. So right here's where we adjust that. And right now it says 60, it's backwards because I'm coming off a 90 degree angle. So the 60 is a 30, it's a little uh, counterintuitive. But 60 set here makes a 30 degree right here, okay? We're gonna turn our oxygen settling on and you light it up and you're gonna preheat this thing. You're gonna go all the way around it. You wanna go with consistency when you're going around. Try to keep your motion the same. Because if you don't, um, not when you're preheating, but when you're preheating, you want it to be an equal preheat. So if I go fast one minute and slow the other, I'm gonna have hotter and cooler spots along and around this well. I don't want that, okay? You're gonna go fast and go equal fast. You're gonna go slow, go the same slow. When you get to where you think it's hot enough, and that's somewhere around 250 to 350 degrees, I'll show you in a minute. That's where I found is usually uh, the good kindling temperature. What is kindling temperature? That's when uh, this thing will start getting orange up here. I stop after a preheated. I'm going to stop and it's going to start getting orange. You don't want it to get all liquidy before you hit the air trigger to start cutting because it's going to be melty. It's going to fuse back together and it's going to want to pop when you come here to tie in. What I'm going to do also is up here on this top, I'm going to rock this back and forth. I'm not just going to come here, start one spot and take off. You're gonna come up here, I'm preheating. I come up this side, and I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna rock back and forth about an inch or so, maybe two inches like this. And you're gonna see the kindling temperature come up. It's gonna get a brighter orange. And when it's bright, but it's not melting yet, I'm going to start here, hit the trigger, go this way, and then I'm gonna come back. And I'm gonna start. Now you say, well, Mr. Joe, how come you can just punch in and start coming this way? Because what happens when you punch in, there's gonna be some slag inside here. And if I go all the way around, and if I just start, go all the way around, when I come in here to finish that last little bit, it's gonna pop right there. It's gonna make a little divot, a crease in my bubble and mess it up. So this little trick of preheating it, punching in on one side, traveling about an inch and a half kind of quick, and coming back, it's gonna stop that keeps that slag from being up in here. So when I come around, it should cut clean and fall off, okay? That's the trick for that. You may see people do that, you may not see people do that. But that's what it's all about. I'm Gerald W. Brister.